All right, well, let's jump into here. Glory to God, my, my, my. <laughs> Amen. We're, we started a couple, or well, three weeks ago or so, talking on overcoming hindrances to hearing from God. Look with me, if you will, uh, to our, our foundation text once again. Since last week we had a guest speaker, we took a week off. It'd be good to rehearse our foundation text again, looking over in Ezekiel 11, 19, and 20. It says, And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I'll take out the stony heart of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes, and keep mine ordinances, and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Hallelujah. You. Praise the Lord. And then John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And then Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, or great and hidden things, that thou knowest not. And so he said here at the beginning um, that one of God's desire is to commune with us. It is God's desire to fellowship with us. It is God's desire to be in oneness with us. Can you say amen? amen. Yet, and, and, we, and one of the questions we get all the time, Time. As ministers, not just me, other pastors, you go to you go to conferences, you go to you go to seminars, you go to camp meetings, and and I'll tell you, more often than not, you'll hear somebody talking about hearing from God, and then you'll hear people questioning why they can't hear from God. Amen. Well, God said that I'm going to put my laws in their hearts, and and and, and uh, uh, um, I'm going to put a stone, take the stony heart out, give them a heart of flesh, so he can walk in his statutes and keep his ordinances and do them. Jesus said, "My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me." Jeremiah 33 says, "Call me, and I will answer thee." Amen. So then, the, then this brings a question about if God said He will answer us. If God said that, um, you know, that uh, his sheep hear his voice, if God said he's going to take out a stony heart and put in a heart of flesh, and, you know, and we're going to follow his statutes and do them, then why are so many people saying, I can't hear from God? Why? Why is it that people come to the place, they start saying, I can't hear from God? And so we began, we gave, we're giving three different reasons. All right? Now, I would say that, you know, I'll say that these are probably uh, a summary of, of maybe some more, but these are three pretty good ones. And so the first week we talked about was carnality. You know, the Bible says that the carnal mind is enmity against the things of God or against the mind of God. So if you're being carnal, it's hard to hear from heaven. And we, we, you go, go back and listen to the sermon. I'm not going to recover it all. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, and we gave as an example Samson. Now, the story of Samson is not in the Bible, so we can talk about Samson and Delilah and have big Hollywood movies about it. Yeah. Amen? The greatest love story of the Bible, Samson and Delilah, hogwash. It's the greatest love story of the Bible. Hello? Has not, well, actually, there's a couple of ones pretty good, too. Uh, David and Bathsheba, you know. We thought, oh, man, that means the Bible had sex. Yet. Yes, it did. And it's telling you not to do that. I love the story of David and Bathsheba because, you know, the Bible says this. It came for the time of the year when the kings went forth to battle, yet David remained behind in Jerusalem. He didn't see Bathsheba until he stayed behind in Jerusalem. When you're doing what you're supposed to do, you stay out of trouble. That would never be. I'm under grace. Well, David was too. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, but anyway, go back and listen to that sermon. We use Samson as our main example. We gave you the remedy for that. And then, then we talk about the remedies of each thing. And then we started on disobedience. <coughs> and we went to the book of Jonah. And how that God spoke to, listen. I mean, God spoke to Jonah and told him to do something. Now, I'm going to ask y'all something this morning. I know this, I'm sorry for folks behind the pole. I, 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 next building we're in, no pole. <laughs> hate the pole. Glad it's there, but hate it. Y'all yeah. oh, yeah. are all probably glad it's there right now. Especially, for, well, anyway. Jonah heard from God and ran the other way. Some folks aren't hearing from God because they're not doing what he told them to do in the first place. Yeah. 
Joe, you did collect all darts and knives and Nerf balls this morning, right? Okay. Yeah. See, God spoke to Jonah and said, go to Nineveh and preach. And Jonah wasn't happy about it, didn't want to do it, so he took off and went somewhere else. Then got on a ship to Tarshish, got out there in the middle of the sea, and the storm came up, and everybody started saying, Who, why is this storm? What's going on? Why is this here? And finally Jonah says, hey, it's me. Throw me overboard. <laughs> And they didn't want to do that, so they waited a couple more days, and they figured out, we better throw them overboard. We're all toast. And he ended up in the whale's belly, or some great fish. Bible actually says great fish. We don't know that it was a whale. It was a great fish in gastric juices, fish guts, seaweed. They well, you disobey God, you can end up in some nasty places. <laughs> now, you know what amazes me? Then, you know, if you read the book of Jonah, we're not going to read the whole book of Jonah, obviously, but that's your reference. Go read the book. In that book, he gets, he gets a, a repenting, and, says, and he, he says, I will not, listen, listen to this, I love this, I will not observe these lying vanities, called being in that, that, that belly of that great fish, a vanity, a lying vanity. And then when he said, he said, Lord, I'll go, listen, I'll go. Now, what did God tell Jonah when he, when he repented? Go to Nineveh. <laughs> Your disobedience will not get God to change his mind. <laughs> See, some folks think if they disobey and just kind of put it off and then come back and repent, God will just say, never mind. Now, how many of you had your kids try that on you? <laughs> come on now. How many of you had your kids try that on you? You know your kids do it. If you've got kids and you, you raise them any length of time, that's exactly what they'll do. And if they don't want to do something, they'll try the trick of not doing it, getting in trouble, repenting, and hoping you'll say, never mind. But the thing about God is he, is, he has a singular course on certain things. His, his commandments to you are not, never mind later. It is, you, you didn't do it here? Okay, I'm not talking to you. You can offer him great ideas. Hey, I'll go over to such and such city and, and preach. I'll go over here and do this. Let me go down to Tarsus and preach. And then, you know, when things aren't working out and you're living in fish guts and you finally figure out that it's just not working out, disobeying God, you repent with the hopes. Mm -hmm. He'll say, never mind. The first thing out of his mouth is going to be, go do what I told you in the first place. Amen. He's not going to change his mind. Amen. Until you come to the place of absolute surrender and willingness to do what he told you to do, you're not going to hear anything else from God. Now, you might get some prophetess or prophet hogwash. How do you know when you say hogwash? When they come and tell you something different than what God's already told you to do, they're not of the Holy Ghost. They were sent by the devil to get you off track with God. Oh, but they spoke with, you know, they said, my son and my daughter. <clears throat> you got to watch out for the, I mean, look at their eyes. See if they got that cough thing going on from Jungle Book. You know, trust in me. I believe in prophets. I believe, in pro I believe God has prophets. I believe God has prophetesses. I believe people flow in the gifts of the Spirit. I believe people have unction from the Holy Ghost. But I'm telling you, if you're running from God in disobedience, if somebody shows up and says, I think you're supposed to do such and such, that's not God. Amen. Or they start saying, yay. They, see, some people want to be your Holy Ghost. There's only one person that can be your Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. Amen. And if God's giving you instruction, because the, the Spirit and the Word agree, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost are all on the same page. Amen. You're not going to have the Father saying, go to Nineveh, and the Holy Ghost saying, hey, sh -sh -sh, I want to be your favorite God. You go do this. It's all right. I'll work it out with the Father. It ain't going to work that way. Amen. You go to the Holy Ghost. See, people do this all the time. Kids do it with their parents. Dad says, you get in there and clean up your room. And, and, and Buster Brown runs to Mama. And says, Mama, can I go outside and play? And she don't know what Dad said. Right, yeah. Hello? Sure, honey, go ahead out there. Dad comes in. Where's Buster Brown? Oh, I told him he could go outside and play. Yeah, but I just told him to clean up his room. Oh, you did. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Somebody's back in his toast. 
Hello, are you here? Somebody is in trouble. Why? Because you went around. You tried. But see, here's the thing about God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost are one. They think alike. They, they're in tune with one another. There's nothing hidden from the Spirit of God that the Father has in his heart. The, yeah, even the Bible says that the Spirit of God searches the deep things of God. So if the Father told you something, the Holy Ghost is privy to it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And he's not going to come up and, get, and send, you know, Brother Jerry over, and Jerry come walking in with the staff. So, the Spirit of the living God has sent me. Hello. You are to do exactly opposite of what's in your heart, because I'm the prophet. You think I'm joking. Back in my home church, they had a guy there. And he was just a normal guy. He was a good Christian, served the Lord. But every once in a while, he'd get into this prophet mode. And you knew he when he was in it, because he'd come walking in the back door of the church during the week, during office hours, with sandals on and a staff. <laughs> and he'd walk through the back doors of the sanctuary, because pastor's office in that building was like up in the front room here. And he slammed the staff down, John Zabowski, I have been sent from God with a word. <laughs> I'm telling you. After about the third time he sat him down and said, just, you're not hearing from heaven. It's not God. You, you're going to have to repent. And he, he, you know, he finally straightened out a little bit. <laughs> you see, see, when I say these things, you know, some, people, some people just don't believe things happen. Things happen. I've seen people get married because somebody prophesied them to get married. Then they get divorced. I had one couple I knew that the woman prophesied to the man they're supposed to get married. She was, you know, and, and, I mean, I'm telling you, you know, she was old. <laughs> he, was, he was in his 50s. She was up in her 70s. And, she, and they got to praying together, and they started having tongues and interpretation. And she started saying, yay, the Lord has spoken that we are supposed to get married. <laughs> About seven, eight years later, the Lord stopped speaking, and they got divorced. <laughs> I'm not talking about that kind of hearing from heaven. I believe that the Word, listen, if somebody gives a word to you, it should line up with what's in your heart. If it doesn't, put it in the trash can. Or at least put it on the back shelf and leave it alone. Amen. But if God speaks, you know, listen, let me say this. Number one, God speaks to you out of his word. Yes. Don't expect a special word from heaven when you won't do the written word. Good. Oh, I just need, I want, I, listen, I grew up, I was Pentecostal. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was Pentecostal. And when I first got saved, we had a college prayer meeting. What's a college prayer meeting, Flaky? <laughs> We had the prayer chair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> had the prayer chair. We all go, and everybody gathered around and pray. Now, we're supposed to be praying for them. You know what most of what's going on was? Everybody had a word. Yeah, the Lord says. And when one got done, the other hopped in. And further, the Lord says. You know, the Lord could have all said it once. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't need all 15 of us to tell them. Yeah, yeah, over and over again. It's like Frosty Morn. Sing it over and over and over again, Frosty Morn. Some of you think, that's no such thing as that. Someone put that away, please. Go look on your YouTube, look up Frosty Morn Jingle. It's out there. <laughs> the Frosty Morn little song. Yeah, we get in the prayer chair, and there'd be a word. Somebody, everybody in there would prophesy over you. And it was always great and glorious. You're going to travel the seas, and you'll travel the nations, and you'll do this. Everybody in the place got the same word. Yeah. And they weren't even doing the written word. Now I'm pointing at my, because my iPad, because I got the Bible on here. They weren't even doing the written word. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. We got people who won't even do it in their Jerusalem. But they're going to go to the uttermost. Yeah. You waiting for the word, hallelujah, to release you to the nations. But you're going to let Joey next door go to hell. 
That's why I want all the knives, guns, Nerf balls taken up. Because I say stuff like this, people get upset. I'm going to another church. What kind of church are you going to? One that don't tell me I got to do something. One that tells me I can have everything I want. Well, yeah, you can have what you say as long as what you say lines up with the Bible. Amen. And lines up with the Spirit of God talking to you. Right. Amen. Amen. You can't have what you say if you're not doing what God told you to do. I don't believe that. That's your problem. You won't submit and obey. See, disobedience, Jonah, listen, Jonah had a verbal, audible voice from God tell him, go to Nineveh, and he ran. Not to Nineveh. Right. And when he finally got back to that place of repentance and submission to God, the first thing God tells him is the same thing he already told him. Go to Nineveh. You're going to read it. That's the way it is in the book. Are you here? And so, disobedience is going to get you in trouble. Deuteronomy tells us, I've set before you a blessing and a cursing. A blessing if you obey the commandments, and a curse if you not, do not obey. Well, what do we do to fix this? It's real easy. We talked about this other week. I'm kind of recapping, getting back to where we, we left off. We didn't quite finish this other week. How do you fix disobedience? Anybody know? Yeah. Obey. Obey. Wow. <laughs> I've got me a sharp church. It's deep. <laughs> you guys are in the flow. Hallelujah. I mean, you have ears to hear what the Spirit's saying. I mean, that, that man, you impressive. Isaiah 119 says, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good land. Something very interesting down here at Jeremiah 26, 13. Put that up. Jeremiah 26, 13. Because, listen, I know there's a big teaching out there on this great stuff about that we don't need to repent, and we don't need, listen, 1 John 1, 7, 8, 1 John 1 was written to the, 1 John was written to the church. You got Bozo saying, 1 John chapter 1 was not written to the church. We don't repent. If you listen to somebody like that, you're going to get in trouble. Yeah. They even got their own Bible, and they found some Bible where the 1 John chapter 1, verses 7, 8, 9 are not even in the Bible. And they say, that's our Bible! See, it's, scholars agree it's not even in the, in the Scriptures. Yeah, the Jehovah's Witness got their Bible too. And the Mormons got an extra whole book. You better stop looking for something that they're taking stuff out and rearranging <coughs> and rewording to get you to do away with good sound theology. Amen. Amen? But look at Jeremiah 26, 13. Therefore now amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God. Stop. What did God say? If you're in disobedience, amend your ways. And you're doing what you're doing. You're going to have to listen. If you're walking in disobedience, you're going to have to change some stuff. If you're walking in disobedience, you're going to have to change some stuff. <laughs> now, if you're walking in disobedience, you're going to have to amend your ways and your doings. As simple as King Jimmy for it, you got to change some stuff. Yes. Amen. 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 Why'd you walk through the chair? It's got your attention, didn't it? <coughs> you're going to have, listen, you can't keep doing what you're doing if you've been in disobedience. And expect God to bless. It doesn't work that way. And yet we keep running around. We try to get somebody to tell us we're doing the right thing. We try to get a friend who'll counsel us. Oh, yeah. We'll even go get a church with another pastor so he can tell us we're doing the right thing. Because so we always hold out the information about what God really told us to do. It's amazing how much information people leave out when they're trying to get other people to tell them what they want to hear. You know, like, kind of like, it'd be kind of like Jonah going in and getting counseling from, you know, one of the prophets. Say, look, you know, no, you're not the prophets because they, they were too in tune with God. But, you know, come to a pastor. Hey, pastor, you know what? I was, I was just going down the road to Tarshish, and a storm came up. They threw me overboard, and the fish swallowed me. And so I just started repenting for any and everything because I wasn't sure why I was there. Mm. And he spewed me out on the ground. And, uh, and, and, and just, it was this, there was this, Voice. I think it was the devil telling me to go down to Nineveh. <laughs> well, son, you don't follow the voice of the devil now. You need, to, you need to follow your heart. 
No, 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 no. Let me tell you something. I'm gonna be, can I say something? A lot of times people come to me and tell me I'm just following my heart. Hogwash. Yeah, go ahead. I'm so tired of hearing that. You're not just to follow your heart. You're to follow the voice of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And, if he's, and if you're not doing what he told you to do, your heart's not going to be a good God. Right. When you're rejecting what the Spirit of God, either through the written word or his voice, has already told you to do. I just follow my heart. Follow peace. We use a lot of catchphrases, and then people interpret them all kinds of ways. Let me, let's start out. Go to the Bible. What does the Bible tell you to do? All right, I'll say this together. We love Pastor Ed. He's preaching the truth. And I need to hear it. I've had people come to my office and say, and, you know, I, the, the Lord just says as long as, I, as my heart is right. That's not true. If you be willing and obedient. See, the willingness is the heart. Bobblehead it. <laughs> Amen. Willingness is the heart. But the obedience is, just, is required just as much as the willingness. The Lord just says, my heart's right. It's all like, nah. You can have the right heart and not do what he told you to do, and it's not going to work. Right. Uh, you, can have, you can do what he told you to do and not have the right heart about it, and it ain't going to be good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Willing and obedient. Obedience, true biblical obedience really comes up with having the right heart and the, and, and the right doings that go with the right heart. Somebody said, glory. Somebody told me the other week, they said, Pastor, you, done chopped my t you, you, you just chopped my toes all the way off. I don't even have any. Hallelujah. Stepped all over them. Good. I love healing services too. No. He says here, in, in, over in Jeremiah 26, 13, Therefore now amend your ways and doings and obey the voice of the Lord. How hard is this? There are things you know God told you to do but you ran from. But yet you want God to come up and give you answers to all kinds of stuff and you won't do what he told you to do. He might have told you, I want you to go to church all the time. And you stay away every chance you get. Hello? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's what he told you. Now, we do know he says, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together as is the manner of some. You can't have house church, stay home and just do nothing. Oh, we, we just get together and worship the Lord. If, you, if you're not, anyway, I don't even get into that. You just won't do that because you don't want anybody to act, telling you what you can and can't do. You always going to sit around with special revelation. I've had people come give me their special revelations that don't even line up with the Bible. The Lord told me this. No, he didn't. Beelzebub did. The Lord of heaven and earth, the great God Almighty, hallelujah, the creator, glory to God, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, he who was first and last, he who was and is and is to come, didn't tell you that. If it's contrary to his word, he didn't tell you that. The Lord showed me. Just as long as my heart's right now. Amend your ways. If you're in disobedience, if you listen, I want to ask you a question. How many want to clearly hear God's voice either through through feeding on the scriptures or in time of prayer? How do, not necessarily a prop, somebody prophesy. Let me tell you something. Don't go look for somebody to prophesy over you. Yeah, right. That's a good word. If the Lord wants to you to get a special word like that, let the Lord do it. But don't you look for it because the devil will accommodate you. So true. And there's enough people out there that are in tune with the devil enough, they'll, they'll think any goosebumps the Holy Ghost telling them to do something. Yeah, they'll yeah. think any fault they got is the Holy Ghost because they don't know their head from a hole in the ground. No, right. That's right. Are you here? Yeah. You got to you gotta, you gotta let God decide. I can tell you. You can get led. People start telling, the Lord chose me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Timbuktu. Kalamazoo, Michigan, that's where you're supposed to go. <laughs> Ooh. The Lord showed me you made a C on your last English report. Did you make a C on your last? <laughs> <laughs> They're familiar spirits, too. There are. Yep. And they can, they can, they can, they will manipulate and they'll give people information so that it gives them credibility in your eyes. 
and then they'll speak things under the appearance or under the guise that it's the Word of God or the Holy Ghost, and it's the devil getting you off track. That's why you got a pastor who's in tune with the Holy Ghost. Let the prophets be judged. And let me tell you something. Somebody's got a word for you, and they're not willing for me to hear it. Run. It's private. It ain't that private. Yeah, right. <laughs> if it's the Spirit of God, I'm your shepherd. Yeah. Well, it's telling them to leave the church. Oh! The Holy Ghost is going to prophesy for people to leave the church and go help you in your new startup. Uh -oh. That's why you don't want the pastor to hear it. I'm going to step in the chairs again. <laughs> See, disobedience, what's this got to do with disobedience? You don't listen to God? You go back and study your Bible. What happened with Saul? Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Everybody's going, wait, what, what happened? Well, see, he wouldn't listen to Samuel. Huh? And then Samuel died. Yep. And finally he went to a necromancer yeah, to get a word. Because he wouldn't do what the Lord told him to do. He disobeyed. <laughs> and good ideas are not God ideas. Remember when he went out to kill the kings and, and Samuel comes up? And Samuel's mad. Because they were to kill the kings and the animals not take any, anything. They would kill everything. Samuel gets there, and Saul comes out. Hey, we did just what the Lord said do. And Samuel goes, what's that bleeding I hear in my ears? Yeah. Well, well, well you know, some of the guys wanted to, wanted to give some stuff and sacrifice to the Lord. And, 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 and what's the king doing over there? Uh -huh. Well, we're waterboarding him trying to find out where he's got his, his treasure at. He did not obey God. And when he said that they wanted to sacrifice the Lord, Samuel looked at him and said, to obey oh is better than the sacrifice. There are people who'd rather give their money than do what God told them to do in a church. Uh -huh. I'm not going to clean the toilets. Why not? I'm too good for that. Oh, you are. You're too good to come and help clean the church. Yeah, I'll just give. I'll pay for somebody to come do it. My gift is giving. You better watch out. You need to be, you need to obey God. Yeah, you're right. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're too good to clean the toilets, then you're not good enough to stand in my pulpit. For sure, right. It's your pulpit? Yeah. I'm the shepherd here. I'm the under-shepherd here. Yeah. People come in, I want to I wanna preach. Yeah, go clean the toilets. So, what do you mean? I'm, I'm, I'm anointed. Well, go ahead, Andy. I mean, I saw no time for sergeants. <laughs> it's an old Andy Griffith movie. Boy, he, he was kind of, he was kind of like Gomer. Yeah. <clears throat> Man, that sergeant put him in charge of cleaning the latrines. They were, they were scrubbed and shiny. He had a foot pedal doll. The lids came up at attention. <laughs> Oh, that's the old Andy Griffith movie. Yeah, and then that's, that drill sergeant wanted to keep him in boot camp forever. <laughs> Hello? See, there's people who won't obey God in the realms of submission. I, I'm not going to get to the other one this morning. They won't obey God in the realms where God has placed them and given them an opportunity to serve. They want to be somewhere else. They want to be, and they want to be at this position, or they want to do this, or they're too good for that. Yet they think God speaks to them all the time. I'm telling you, God don't speak to you when you won't do what he's telling you to do. Right. right. Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I need for you to go to Faith and Victory Church and clean the toilets. Lord, I, I, miss, I didn't get you quite right on that. I'll do anything you want me to do. Well, Faith and Victory Church needs somebody to come help with the janitorial services. Mm -hmm. I'll hire the janitor to obey. Yep is better than sacrifice. Your money is not your, is, is not your obedience. Right. You're making a sacrifice so you don't have to obey.
Boy, it's getting quiet in this Pentecostal church. <laughs> you got like the first church of the frozen chosen. <coughs> Hallelujah. Are you here? Amen. See, they could have obeyed. See, think about what? Saying, we wouldn't have that scripture in the Bible, that statement in the Bible, had they done what they're supposed to do. Right. That he, Samuel throws it, Saul throws it, saying, hey, look, <laughs> they're going to sacrifice. <laughs> Isn't that cool? We're cool. We took all that stuff, and we wanted to sacrifice to the Lord. You disobeyed God, and his response was not, you know what? I appreciate it. You hear some pastors do that now. I appreciate your heart. You wanted to sacrifice. You're such a wonderful, we see, we try to make people feel good. Mm -hmm. Samuel didn't try to make Saul feel good. Care, huh? He said to obey is better than sacrifice. He went and killed the king, and he went and had all the animals killed off. Yeah. You don't pull wool, you see? Yeah. I, I was on a show one time, and somebody called in, and it was asked the pastor, the local asked the pastor show. Asked, it's about this time I said, that's it, I ain't doing this anymore. I'm done with this crazy bunch of people. <laughs> and the guy hosting was an anti-faith guy. Now, how do you know this? Well, I found out what kind of church he pastored. They were, they were so anti-faith, they, they go to Co Copeland Hagen meetings back in the day with signs trying to keep people from going in. Okay? The group that he was hooked up with. Well, I saw him over at, at Marshall's one day, trying on a shirt. I said, hey, how you doing? You know? And he turned his back on me and wouldn't talk to me. I thought, oh, yeah. Yeah, you get on and ask the pastor talk about how great you are, and you go turn your back on me and won't even talk to me, and you, you know, you've been on, we've been on the show together before. You, what's wrong with you? The flesh rose up. I wanted to cold cock him right from behind. I didn't. I had to cast that down. Hallelujah. Yeah. So this woman calls in and says, well, I've been sending my tithe here and sending my tithe there and sending my tithe there. And, and I... <clears throat> and, I, and I answered the question. I said, look, I said, your tithe belongs to the local church. You used to take your tithe when you go to church. You don't send it off to television, preacher so-and-so, and preacher this and preacher that. It goes to your local church. That's where the tithe goes. That's what the Bible says. He takes over. Well, I just thank your heart for giving. You're such a wonderful person wanting to give to God. No, 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 no. This is a matter of obedience. Bring the tithe into the storehouse. Don't send it off. Yeah, right. Amen. We're not talking about a matter of a right heart. We're talking about a matter of obedience. Your right heart does not um, absolve you from obedience to the Scriptures. And quite frankly, if you're disobeying the Scriptures, you don't have the right heart. We want to walk. Pastor, why can't you just preach on the blood? Because the blood won't work if you won't obey. You can plead the blood all day long. Come on now. They were going to sacrifice. And he said, the bay is better than sacrifice. Well, the blood of Jesus is more powerful than anything. Your disobedience does not get the blood of Jesus to cover that and keep you going and, and, just, and just let you get out of it. It doesn't work that way. Amend your ways, amen, and your doings. And obey the voice, and then the Lord will repent of the evil that He has pronounced against you. Man, He's going to clean their clock. But if you'll repent and you'll stop doing it, you'll do what I told you to do. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy 4 30, 31. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things will come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shalt be obedient unto His voice. Yeah. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. Now, here's the deal. You can be in disobedience, repent, and say, Lord, okay, I was wrong. I ran from what you told me to do. I'm going to do what you told me to do. He says he's merciful. And he will not forsake thee, nor destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swear unto thee. Think about that now. Now, God demands the obedience. And even if you disobey, if you will call on him, turn to him, Amend your ways. He's a merciful God. What's that tell me? It's never too late. <coughs> Amen. It's not too late for you to fix it. Not too late for you to change. It's not. God's merciful. 
and he'll, he'll restore you. Now, let me say this. Don't try to trick God. Don't call somebody and try to get a different word. I told this story before. I'm going to kind of close with this story. A number of years ago, I, had, I was in my office, and this girl called and said, can I talk to the pastor? I said, well, I'm the pastor. She said, well, can I, I need to ask you a question. I said, well, well, well go ahead. Uh, I'll listen to what you got to say. Sometimes you just need to kind of fill people out and find out where they're coming from. She said, well, um, I'm in a church, and um, there's this man at, that, that the Lord has shown me I'm supposed to marry. I said, well, I said, well, well, that's fine. I said, have you talked to your pastor? She said, well, no, I can't talk to him about this. Drip, red flag number one. If you can't go to your pastor, usually there's something about it. That's why you're trying not to go to your pastor. Hello. You just call and dial a prophet hoping you get the right word to hit, tell you what you want to hear. That's what you're doing. So I, I said, well, why can't you get, well, you know, it's, it's, it, and so I, I let, her, let her go ahead and hang herself at this point. So I said, well, you know, have you ever talked to him? Well, no, no. Have you ever been on a date with him? No. Uh, but the Lord showed you, you have, you're supposed to get, yep. And I, and I kind of kept prodding her and prodding her. I said, well, did, has he shown you any interest in you? Nope. Well, why do you want somebody to show you any interest in you? The Lord showed me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know what Lord it was too. Not the Ruth Lord, something. <laughs> so after a little, just a little while, finally she said, well, to be honest with you, because I, I kept asking all the questions about why he's not showing her any interest. He's married. I'm glad she went in front of me because she probably see my mouth on the floor. <laughs> I'm thinking on the other phone, do what? <laughs> but really what came out of my mouth was this. And, you know, sometimes you just don't have a filter that works good enough. <laughs> I said, sister, you had a pizza dream. You had too much pizza and indigestion when you thought of that. I said, God said, I am the Lord. I hate divorce. He's not going to tell you that you're going to marry that man and he's happily married to his wife. And the reason you call me is, you knew you couldn't tell your pastor and say, the Lord showed me I'm going to marry so-and-so, because he'd look at you and say, he's married. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. I said, she was just hoping that somebody would tell her that it was right. Uh -huh. She wanted somebody to say, well, go ahead and follow your heart. <laughs> yeah, she didn't get it at Pastor Ed's dollar profit. <laughs> <laughs> She got told, I got, I rebuked her. And, and then I, I brought her back down to earth. I said, look, I said, your flesh is in control. I said, that's not God. I can tell you it's not God. The reason you don't want to talk to your pastor is because you know he's going to tell you the same thing. Yeah. You think people will go to somebody else just to get a different word? Yeah, I got another story I'm going to add on to this. <laughs> yeah. Going through the phone book looking for some pastor to tell her that she's all right to marry the man that's married and chase him down because she knows if she goes to her pastor, he's going to tell her no. Might even call her in on the carpet and re rebuke her for having a spirit of lust and being lustful, chasing down a married man. See, I can tell you, people, people will go and try to find what they want to hear. I had a girl that we knew from our home church. <clears throat> she was from this area, and, um, but she had gone to college down where we're from. And um, knew us. So when, we, so when we moved to Greensboro, she would come visit when she was at home or whatever. And she had gone on to some meeting somewhere where they were releasing prophets to the nations. It was part of the Kansas City Revival. It wasn't in Kansas City, quote Kansas City Revival, where they were just releasing prophets, the, the school of the prophets. And they were, they would go down there and go to school for a few weeks and they'd lay hands on you, send you out as a prophet to the nations. You can't take six weeks of school and become a prophet. Dear God, help anybody who listens to you. Are you here? These young guys coming out, I'm a prophet. You couldn't preach yourself out of a wet paper bag on a rainy day. And you go go prophesying what everybody's supposed to do. First of all, well, why did you say that? Because a prophet's first a preacher and a teacher of the Word. The other gifts function in his ministry, but he's first a preacher and a teacher of the Word. They know the Bible. That one ever big. But I that's so anyhow. And uh, she came to me and said, and gave me this tape, had this tape of her prophecy. 
And I put it in this thing. It was, you did the kind of dates it because it, it was a cassette. And I put it in the thing and listened to it. And I say, well, I, well let's, let's talk about this. Did you ever in your life have anything in your heart about what that tape says? Well, no. Oh, really? No, not a thing. But they laid hands on me. The whole, the, all the big guys laid hands on me and prophesied that over me <clears throat> and sent me out. Woo! I'm going out to do this and going out. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Never in your heart. Is that really in your heart now? No, but that's, I'm, I know. <clears throat> it's not in my heart, but you know, they gave me that word. I said, let me tell you what you need to do with this. I said, you need to take this tape and you put it on the back shelf and you don't need to listen to it. You don't need to pick it up. You don't need to do anything with that unless God speaks to you down the road somewhere and says and starts confirming to your heart by the Spirit of God that that's really true. I said, you don't need to listen to it again. You don't need to touch it again. As a matter of fact, I'm inclined to tell you to throw it away. Because God can tell you what to do. They got up, left my office, got in their car and drove to Greenville, North Carolina to my pastor, church we came out of. Made an appointment with him. Yeah, because she didn't like what I said. See, you're talking about disobedience. Now, if I had told her that it was right, it was God, it was heavenly, she'd be running around telling how great a pastor I am. Because I disagree. She drove, she drove at that time, it took almost four hours to get to Greenville because 264 was in four lane, all, I mean, out of Raleigh down to Wilson it was, but down from Wilson to Greenville, it took an extra almost hour to get down to Greenville because of the two lane, the farmers and stuff. And then 85 was at four lane, all the way to Durham and stuff. It was two lane, all that back in there. You had to, you had to cut through on 70 to get over. It, was just, it just took almost four hours to get to Greenville back in those days, three and a half, four hours. You can do it two and a half now. Woo! Back then you couldn't. Banks of the point with Pastor. He comes in. She says, and she plays him the tape. She said, now, I took it up to Greensboro, the pastor, and he, he listened to it. And he didn't have to, he, he, got, he got off easy. Because he said, well, what did he say? Well, she told, he told me to put it on the back shelf, not listen to it, not do anything about it, unless the Lord, it sounded like he gave you good advice to me. <laughs> she drove uh, three and a half hours each way to get, sounded like he gave you good advice. People will, people will run and try to get somebody. You've got to stop doing that. The devil will send people to you to tell you, you can do whatever you want to do. I don't care what anybody's told you. I had somebody do that in our church one time. Somebody was struggling with some counsel we gave them. And they went to another person in the church. And that person in the church says, they didn't like my counsel. And so they told that person, I don't care what anybody tells you. You can do what you want to do. Ruined them. Ruined them. Now, I'm going to be real strong here. This is for our church and those listening by the Internet. Don't you ever open your mouth and try to override the leadership. You may not agree. And if you don't agree, come talk to me. We can talk about it. So but don't you tell that person that you'll mess them up. Yeah, absolutely right. It messed that person up. They've never recovered. Mm -hmm. I said they've never recovered spiritually. Because somebody thought they knew better than the right. pastor. We had, we had counsel from heaven to help them. And somebody stuck their big fat nose in it thinking they're being spiritual and gave them what they wanted to hear. And when they got what they wanted to hear, they started following after that because a spiritual person told them it was God when God had already spoken. God had already given them a word out of the counsel and the safety of their pastors. My wife, my wife was praying, and for like six weeks, she kept saying, Honey, I keep getting that so and so is supposed to do such and such. So we called him in and said, Look, we, listen, we, we're not trying to be, you know, we're not like this shepherding thing where you got to do what we say. But my wife just keeps getting this, has been getting it for weeks, and I have to agree with her. It's the, it's the Spirit of God. And we gave it to them. They didn't like it. They left my office. They tried to obey, but they didn't like it. And they were telling somebody one day about it, and that person then interjected and told them they could do what they wanted to do. And that's what they did. They did what they wanted to do. Had they submitted to what the Spirit of God was saying through us, it would have salvaged them on a spiritual level. But they haven't been salvaged in yet. It would have kept them on the straight path. It's a dangerous thing to be involved in another person's disobedience and to condone their disobedience.
Don't like it when you get heavy. Like, that's heavy. You know, that's heavy. That's really heavy. He ain't heavy. Anyway. That's heavy. You don't help a person disobey. As a matter of fact, those guys on that ship with Jonah were helping him disobey, and they threw him overboard. Yeah. Get out of here, dude. You know, you're going to sink us. <laughs> Sorry, Brother Bill. How many are going to believe God was going to get some, another bank of lights back here? Yeah. They, they'll cover up to the front row. Y'all with me? Amen. I'm going to close right here. Amend your ways. Do what the Lord said to do. Do not think for a minute that he's going to tell you to do something different than he's already told you to do. And don't go find somebody. You can find anybody to tell you what you want to hear. But if you're going to do that, at least be s s Christian and spiritually honest enough and go see Sister Rosa. <laughs> at least then everybody knows it was a devil to start with. <laughs> Hello? Sister Rosa, financial advice. Have you ever seen where they live? Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? You ride by the beat-up house, or the, and the car's got you know, three wheels jacked up with no tires on it, and you got a sign out there, Sister Rosa will give you spiritual, I mean, financial advice. <laughs> well, she ain't no sister of mine, and I don't need her financial advice. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Stop looking for other Christians to tell you you can do what you want to do, because what you want to do is going to get you in trouble. I'm serious. Let's obey God. Let's do what the God told us in the Bible. Let's do it. And if He's spoken to you and you know He spoke to you and you just keep running from it, stop running. Go back and repent and say, Lord, you know what? I've been disobeying you all this time. I repent and I will do what you told me to do. Y'all ain't shaking your head. Y'all just sitting there looking at me. I ain't shaking my head on that one. You better. I'm speaking about the Spirit of God. I just didn't come up here to say this just for the fun of it. He gave me this message. He gave me the points. I, didn't, I couldn't find, I didn't find this stuff anywhere else. The Spirit of God gave this to me. You need to start coming to church believing that the Spirit of God speaks to you through me. And just stop picking and choosing. I like that message. Woo! Oh, he was off today. I don't like what he said. They say he's off. You better stop that mess. I'm telling you, you better stop that. <coughs> well, I don't like what Pastor said today, so I ain't going to listen. And then you're going to come back next week expecting him, me to speak to you and give you an answer from heaven that's going to revolutionize your life. And you wouldn't do what I said last week. Fire! <laughs> Fuck, I'm in a firing squad sometimes, the way y'all looking at me. You know I'm talking right. God speaks through me to you as the pastor of the church. And I get up and say things. And I'll say stuff I didn't plan on saying, didn't think about saying. Came out of the Spirit of God and it was for you. And then you get mad. I don't know who he thinks he is. I'm the pastor. God called me here. God told me to, listen, I, I, I'd rather program computers to do what I'm doing. I'm not a, like, like being in front of people that much. It's not my thing. Hello? I like people, but I don't like being in front of them like this. God anointed me and called me and set me and then get, speaks through me. And the way, my, way, I, way I operate in the ministry is I do a lot of extemporaneous because that's because God's speaking to me to you. And I trust him to do that. And I'll say stuff sometimes, and I'll think, why in the world did I say that? And then somebody will sometimes, sometimes weeks or months later come and say, you know, you were preaching such and such and such, such, you were speaking to me about such and such, and I didn't want to do it. Hey, I've had tell me that. I didn't want to do it. That's why I was mad with you. Well, I knew that. <laughs> I figured that out on my own. Hello, Father, we thank you for the word. Thank you for the spirit of God. Thank you that you've given us unction and direction this morning to speak to this people. I know that by your spirit, you're making adjustments so that they can either hear from you or go back to where they have heard from you and walk in obedience to you, your word, and your voice. And do that. Stand up, which you've given them to do.